Whenever I find myself scrolling through YouTube, a diamond in the rough I often find amidst all the garbage content is a YouTuber named Terror, and he uploads plenty of different kinds of content, but a series of his that caught my attention is one where he showcases random pieces of popular media remade in Scratch. And when I watched this little series of his, it gave me an idea. I like Scratch. I like popular media. Now what's something that I'm interested in and passionate about that's been remade in Scratch a multitude of times with high effort and also hasn't been really covered a lot online? <laughs> Why as a manga dio, of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Pizza Tower. Now, if you're someone who just came for Pizza Tower and don't know what Scratch is, or the other way around, I'll just go ahead and explain what both of them are to you. Pizza Tower is a well-received indie platformer that came out at the beginning of 2023, known for its unique art style and its fast-paced gameplay that's often compared to the likes of games like Wario Land 4. If you don't know what that game is, think of other games like Mario or Sonic. If you don't know what those games are, leave. Scratch is an online community where you can upload your own projects like animations, games, etc., utilizing its block code programming engine, which is something I used to do a lot and make my own, uh, very high quality madness combat animations. Yeah. And despite the main demographic being young children, people have made some genuinely impressive projects with it, many of which are Pizza Tower related. Now, while there are literal hundreds of projects and communities on Scratch based off Pizza Tower, I'm only going to show off the few high-quality ones that ended up catching my eye. Oh, and I was just going to do this video as the standard me showing you my gameplay with the commentary over it, but... But I realized that over halfway through the recording, my microphone wasn't on, so... The first one I'm going to be playing is called Pizza Tower Engine Pepperman, which is just a Pepperman boss fight made by Spur Bros. It was also actually made a noise boss fight, but I didn't play that one and you guys can just go check it out for yourselves if you want to see what it is. And by the way, if you want to check out any of the projects that I'm playing, I will leave a link to them in the description. And if you end up deciding that you want to play them, I suggest using this website called Turbo Warp, which is used to help run Scratch projects faster considering Scratch was never intended to run anything better than a middle scores computer science project. Now, like I said before, this is just the Pepperman boss fight, but what makes it really impressive is how well they were able to replicate it. They included a lot of Pepino's moves like the mock run, the grab, the taunt, the parry, the break dance, the uppercut, and the ground pound. They even have the second phase fully programmed with all the statues and these Pepperman minion goon things. The gameplay feels nice, with the only thing being weird is how fast the grab propels you. And as far as bugs go, there weren't really any. The only few that I noticed was sometimes you weren't able to hit Pepperman after he did his ground pound attack. I also realized that the controls weren't at all what they said they were in the description of the project, but which isn't really a problem considering you can change your keybinds. And finally, I realized when you're breakdancing, you won't take any damage until you stop breakdancing, and even then it'll only be one damage, regardless of how many times you've been hit prior. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm pretty sure they have all rank animations. I did end up beating it and getting an S rank, and I also beat it again and got a P rank, but I realized I wasn't recording. But overall, there isn't much else to say about it, except it's pretty good. The next one up is simply just called Pizza Tower Engine, and it was actually made by the same person who made the Pepperman one. And after several hours of trying to input the correct keybinds, I was finally able to start playing. Now, the entire level seems to just be a layout of the level John Gutter, and it's put together pretty well. I mean, all of Pepino's moves work, the enemies work the same way they do in the game, there's toppings, and there's- Oh. It's pizza time. So you can start pizza time way earlier in the level than you normally can, which isn't really that much of a problem, I didn't expect them to do the whole level in Scratch, and I- Yeah, did I forget to mention that it said this was unfinished? Yeah, so sadly the creator said that they were never gonna finish this, so that means the rest of the level isn't gonna get done, but I could have sworn I saw on the cover of the project that it said there was a lap 3, so I went all the way back to the end of the level and started peach time, and instead of just going forward, I just turned around, and surely enough, there was the lap 2 portal. So I quickly did one more lap, and then... So overall, despite being unfinished, it's pretty good. So next up on the list is Pizza Tower Somewhat. Plus. 
I'm not really sure what the plus represents, but whatever they added must be the reason this project took a whole eon to load. And once I hopped in, I just ran around the main lobby and saw that they had four unique levels. I also saw that they had this option to turn on infinite laps, but you all know when it comes to lapping in Pizza Tower, I'm not the best. I'm killing myself. So I go ahead and start playing the tutorial, and it does pretty much everything you'd expect out of a tutorial. It has these little signs that teach you how to do specific moves, and rooms made to help you test out those moves. The next level, Mapo Mapo Originalo, other than just being a new level, also introduces these little rat creatures. The whole level was pretty short, but overall it was designed pretty well. The next level is a Mario one, which is why I suggest to whoever made this to sleep before I open. And just like the last level, it introduces a new enemy, which is this weird pinhead thing. Who you call a pin and again, just like the last level, it was pretty short, but well designed. Except for this one part where it took a million tries to get a single topping. The next level is Pizzanet, and this level's new enemy is what I can only assume to be some kind of homunculus. This level also introduces a lock mechanic where there's this door that you can't get through until you find the key. In order to find the key, you have to run all the way through the level to this little green room right here. Now all we have to do is just backtrack through the level, which should be easy considering we killed most of the enemies on the way. Right? Well, it would be easy if it weren't for the single room right here, with this big, impossible jump that you're never taught how to do at any point throughout the entire level. So, so I spent an embarrassingly long amount of time trying to cross this gap, and there, there was no way to do it, and eventually I just went back through the level to see, like, did I miss something? Is something tell you how to do this? But it didn't. This part was just poorly designed. What the fuck were they thinking? Oh, but it turns out all you have to do is just uppercut and jump. What was I thinking? Then after that, I just beat the level easily. Now that should be it for this one, right? Right. Well, it isn't, because there's actually a whole nother boss fight, although I didn't play much of it because I couldn't comprehend what was happening at all because I I'm dumb. And if you thought that was it, it's not, because there's an entire second floor with four of its own unique levels. And some of those levels even have their own transformations. And not only is there another boss fight, but there's also an entirely different floor with some of its own unique levels as well. So this project is just practically its own game at this point. And I didn't get any footage of it, but I did check out some of the other levels off camera, and they were well designed like the rest. And overall, this project is just really well made. Just about all of Pepino's moves are included, and despite being short, all the levels are unique. Some of the levels even have their own unique transformations, the boss fights are unique as well. I guess you could say that its visuals are kind of lacking, but I'm assuming that's the case because all of these sprites were probably made using the tools that Scratch gives you, which isn't necessarily a lot to work with. And also, I didn't get any footage of this, but I went back and checked, and they have stuff like Lap 3 fully programmed in. So overall, I'd say that this one is pretty good. Next up is a project called Top Mock Mania, and the concept for this one is pretty simple. You run. And once you open up the project, we're greeted with something we haven't seen in any of the other ones, and that's a main menu. They also have this settings tab, and also the shop, which, more on that later. So I get to the actual game part and start playing, and realize I can't do anything because I have the mobile control selected. Okay, so now getting to the actual game part. Your only goal is to keep running for as long as you can, and to get a higher score. And you can just blast through pretty much every single enemy, but there are still some obstacles in your way. Now you do have a few more moves at your display other than just running, one of those being the grab. This is specifically used to kill the mini johns, as they're the only enemy you can't kill by just normally running into them. Although there isn't really a punishment for not killing them, you just don't get any points. You can also hold right on the arrow keys to go even faster, but in turn you have less time to react to things. The good thing about this is that you don't have to rely solely on good reaction time, as there is this map up top that tells you everything you're going to encounter that wave. With these little grey squares representing the mini johns, these green ones representing a staircase of enemies, these yellow ones representing enemies either on the ground or above, and these red squares representing either obstacles you have to jump over or roll under. Once you get to the next wave, I'm not really sure if there's a spike in difficulty or anything, it just seems to be a matter of endurance and seeing how long you can keep this up. Now occasionally after beating a wave you'll get this boss fight-like encounter with Pizza Face where he shows up and you either have to mash the dash or grab button. Yeah, that's it. Despite being pretty simple and not all that hard, I do still think it's a pretty fun and well-implemented feature that helps shake up the gameplay. Now I want to shift my attention back over to the shop that I mentioned at the beginning. In it there's a couple of items you can buy, one being a shield that allows you to get hit without instantly ending the run, one is an item that allows you to earn points by jumping over enemies, and the final one is an item that causes Pepino to go absolutely ape and completely destroy the place. But it only lasts for one wave though. Out of all the other projects that I've played, I'd say that this one is the most visually pleasing out of all of them. 
I'd also say that this project, overall, its concept is pretty simple, but its execution is well done and very creative. And I could honestly see something like this being some kind of Pizza Tower mobile game. It would be good to finally have a good one for once. So I'd say out of all of the projects that I've played so far, this one's easily one of my favorites, being very creative, visually pleasing, and just genuinely fun to play. Next is Code Castle, made by, uh, that guy. Just like Top Muck Mania, this one also has its own main menu, one that is very similar to the one actually in Pizza Tower. And without actually playing any of the levels, you can easily see how advanced this one is. They have save files, different costumes, and even achievements. The first level is the tutorial that has these little cat creatures that tell you what to do. Just like a lot of the other ones, they managed to program in most of Pepino's moves. They've also even programmed in toppings and collectibles. Finally, at the end of the level, we get to activate this project's version of Pizza Time. Once I got back to the beginning, I tested to see if lap 2 worked, and it did. I then tried lap 3, but then died almost immediately. Now, there's only one other level, and it's also unfinished, but I'd say that's alright considering how well the rest of this project is made. Now, the whole gimmick of this level is that you have to go into these rooms in order to collect toppings, but you can't use the mock run or else you'll wake up Baldi. For some reason. It's a mechanic that reminds me a lot of the one from Don't Make a Sound. <laughs> Later in the level, we also get introduced to a transformation which turns you into the average Pizza Tower fan. All this transformation really does is restrict your movement to where you can only move while jumping. And kind of like how transformations are used in Pizza Tower, these are used to kill these little dog blocks that are in the way. My only real complaint with this transformation is that it just feels slow. I mean, in Pizza Tower, the transformations are pretty slow too, but the cool thing about them is that once you get the hang of them, you get to blast through the levels just as fast as you were without them. But you can't really do that with this one, considering all you do is just jump. I also noticed three of these little portal things scattered around the level, and I'm assuming they're supposed to be secrets, but they don't work yet. Now I know that I said that Top Muck Mania was my favorite one visually, and it still is, but I just really like the way this one looks too. The reason I liked Top Muck Mania was mainly just because it ripped sprites directly from the game, but the reason I like this one is because the, the sprites aren't 100% unique, they're taken from like all the default sprites that Scratch gives you to work with, mainly because this is a Scratch-based Pizza Tower project. But I like how they don't just copy and paste those sprites directly and put it into the game. Like, take the Scratch Cat, for example. Instead of just him doing that one pose, they change his sprite a bit, giving him unique animations. Which causes him to show more emotions and give him more of a personality, making him feel like a character rather than just a mascot. I mean, I personally really like how expressive the TV animations are in this one. Overall, this project is just really well designed, it looks good, and the programming is very impressive. So I'd say it's pretty good. As a general rule of thumb, I decided to save the best for last, and that is Pepino Pays His Taxes. And instead of talking over this one, this is during the latter half of the video when I turned my microphone back on, so I'll just use that footage. Okay, so I- <laughs> I don't even know what this game is. I just saw it in one of the Pizza Tower Studios. It was like one of the most recent projects. And I'm gonna be honest, it looks- it looks hype, so I'm playing it. Alright everyone, Pepino Pays His Taxes. I don't- I don't even know what I'm supposed to do. It said that there was 10 unique endings. I can taunt. What happens if I just leave? Oh. <laughs> well guys, Pepino's dead, that's the end of the video. Oh, there's a hyper-realistic door right here, can I just go through it? Huh? This rocks. <laughs> I love this. Was that the bite of 80s? What if I told you guys one of my greatest talents is that I have the entire intro for the first Markiplier FNAF video completely memorized. Hello everybody, my name is Markiplier and welcome to Five Nights at Freddy's, an indie horror game which you guys suggested en masse and I saw that Yami Mash played it and he said that it was really, really good. So I'm very eager to see what's up and that is a terrifying looking animatronic bear. Family pizzeria looking for security guard to work the night shift. 12am, first night. If I didn't want to stay the first night, why would I stay any more than five? Why would I stay any more than two? Hello. You may not believe me, but I swear that is it verbatim. Go check. I see there's money on the ground. Am I supposed to... Okay. So do I just... Alright! Wait to touch! Okay, so now... Okay, that's two endings down. No, three. What if I just... What the hell? <laughs> oh my God, no way. 
This is like the epitome of Scratch and just coding in general. The first computer wasn't as big as an innovation as this one is. Like, wasn't as big as a step forward. Okay, so what else is there to do? Huh? Is that supposed to happen? Oh, I... <laughs> Can I just leave from above? Oh, let's go! New ending! Guys, we need to make a new category on speedrun.com. First person to get the speedrun for uh, all endings in Pepino Pays His Taxes gets to come on the channel. Okay, so... Okay, yeah, so I, I saw in, like, the controls, there's a noise mode. I don't see what this does. Okay, never mind. I, <laughs> I thought that was gonna give me a new ending. Uh... Yeah, I can change colors. I realized that, but... Oh, <laughs> I, I just fucking punched him. I just knocked his block off. Okay. Wait, can I do that to, uh... The animatronic Bonnie in the door? Can I punch him? Yeah, Pepino, fuck him up, get his ass. Fuck, turn out the lights, knock his block off. Okay, never mind. <laughs> okay. So is there anyone else I can beat up? Can I beat up him? No. Wait, I wonder, can I parry Pizza Face? What the hell? <laughs> okay. Uh, did I just time it incorrectly, maybe? What the hell? Hmm. Okay, what I think it's safe to say you, <laughs> you can't parry him. Okay, so, so what else? What to do? I don't know why I did that again. I'm clicking on stuff. Oh. Um, what the scallop? Sorry, that that just startled me. The person who made this should have honestly put a jump scare warning. That was very inconsiderate of them. Uh, <laughs> I, I I can't keep a straight face while playing this. Uh, okay, so what what else is there to do? I'm looking in the controls. I see ten endings in total. I've got like one, two, three, four. I've got some. Okay, so what happens if I just turn out the lights as noise? I can never mind. It's it's broken. You weren't meant to ever do that. Uh. Is there like something I can do on this title card? Maybe I don't know. Let's look at let's look at the scratch comments. Let's see what the the youngins are talking about. I got all endings. You dirty liar! No, you didn't. You know people are in hell right now for lying. Uh, jump and Okay, so Dragon Air Gamer over here, he's just spitting some facts. Best Pizza Tower project, absolutely. That moon looks off. Okay, I knew it. We got another one! Yeah, because I, I realized that moon, it, it like it does not fit in with the background. So I went, can I, can I beat up the noise? Can I beat this little creature to death? I can! Eat shit, nerd! <laughs> it actually called him a nerd. I, I, I didn't think it would do that. Guy, guys, I swear my reactions aren't fake. I swear. Oh, well, that... <laughs> okay, I just immediately got that one. So wait, how many is that? Is that all of them then? I, I got... I paid my taxes. I left. I bet I beat the shit out of Pepino. I... I got... Pr I got gang raped by uh, the noise in Pizza Face. I think that's everything. When I was writing the script for this video, I felt like I should end it with some meaningful, beautiful conclusion, some heartfelt theses, perhaps tackling something like human creativity and how it's impacted us as a species. And then I decided to not be a dumb person for more than two seconds and realized, yeah, this is Pizza Tower and Scratch we're talking about, it's not that deep. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I got inspired to make this by watching Terror's videos. I mean, this type of video seemed like something that would be fun to make, and hopefully you guys would have fun watching. And Terror, if you somehow managed to stumble across this video and ended up watching it, I wanna say, you're a good YouTuber. I like your videos. Now, am I just buttering you up so you don't get mad at me for stealing your style of content and possibly a future video? 100% yes, but I still meant everything I said. Oh, uh, it's the end of the video. I gotta do the thing. I uh, like the video. Uh... Uh, one percent of you, one person in the entire audience is subscribed. Uh, subscribe. Uh, click the bell. Uh, 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 bye.